Inside Africa in association with Zenith Bank. It's a sound that hangs in the air, spills into the streets. Fama Piano is a culture. It's music, it's styling, it's a whole movement from South Africa. And booms out of the taxi ranks. When I think about Amapiano, I think about it being the perfect representation of what the black South African youth today looks like. It's become the soundtrack to daily life. Every corner in every township is an opportunity for people to just get together, sit down, relax, take it easy. Uniquely South African and transcending borders. This is Amapiano. This is Inside Africa. Born in the townships of South Africa, rooted in the Gauteng region, is the distinctive sound of Ama Piano a genre of music making waves across the country and beyond. The deep house, log drum driven bass line paired with the jazzy, soulful sound of high pitched piano melodies can be heard seeping out of car windows in city streets and overflowing from clubs. Understanding the style of music means understanding the sounds that influenced it. We need to take it way back where the foundation is. Ama piano, which means the pianos in the Zulu language, draws from Kwaito, another style of music that merges house beats with hip hop. One of the pioneers of Kwaito is South African producer and record label owner, Oskido. In 1994, the younger generation that time, you know, we started creating our own music, which we called Kwaito. So we used to take house music and then we slow it down and then from there we started reprogramming that music but we're tired of singing these political songs and then we started putting in our own lyrics you know talking about things now which were affecting you know the masses out there so therefore that sound was born a sound that told the story of what was happening in the townships but fast forward now after 26 years 25 years you know these young kids, they go back to where we started in 1994, because the music was now up-tempo, you know. They started slowing down the music, started programming, you know, having their own groove, and boom, here they are. It is believed Ama Piano began in 2012. By early 2019, the underground sound was booming on radios and in clubs across South Africa. But it was during the COVID-19 pandemic that the genre really took off. When we speak about the origins of Ama Piano, it's quite a long drawn argument in terms of where does this stem from. Perhaps it comes from the Gauteng region where its origins can be traced. But as to who is that one person that created Ama Piano, it's a difficult thing. And whoever it is, please come out and let us know. Ash Mopedi, the host of the YouTube channel Groove Cartel, played a part in Ama Piano's explosive rise. When we started with the channel, the idea was to um, bring back Groove. Um, it was during the lockdown and nobody was allowed out. Initially, the conversation around what type of music are we going to present and uh, what we then told ourselves was, as a crew, let us respond to what the streets are listening to. And that's what we did. That's how we got into it. We started off with house music, which we can say is one of the originators of Ama Piano. And then we did Ama Piano after that, we did hip hop. And as the show was growing gradually, we noticed that there's a big spike with Ama Piano. And obviously we're like, okay, so this is what the streets are actually responding to. Perhaps we should rather say it started on the streets. Cause initially the Ama Piano producers, they used to produce in like small shack-like rooms, you know, back rooms at home. And what they're pumping out is resonating with a growing fan base. Not only because of the infectious sounds, people are also attuned to the message in the music. It evolved from being strictly instrumental with the addition of, of vocals that added to its appeal. 
its relevance and resonance to the people because you're speaking about um, struggles that are common to all of us. At a surface level, you might just think it's about the models and whatnot, whatnot. It's not really about that. It's about the struggles of the hood, where all of us come from. And this is what the producers are telling you. Like, we all come from there. And now we're living in Santon-like areas. We're living in the birds. And we're, we're, we're eating slightly better. This is us living the dream. And they're able to share that story in a way that's not so depressing. With all the stress and tension and depression that's going on in the world, Amapiano is the equalizer. It's a, a place where everybody can call home and they get to breathe and relax. You know, there's a feeling that, you know, tomorrow will be a better day. For Ash Mopedi and many others, there's a pride in Amapiano. And that's what the, the township actually is. You know, it represents the beat of Africa. And Amapiano, as a genre, represents that. It, it, it represents the beat of Africa. Everybody gets it. You don't have to work hard to get Amapiano. There's a South African sound that's vibing through millions of social media profiles right now. Amapiano. A musical genre that's blowing up. And apps like TikTok have been vital in making Amapiano a global sound. In December of 2021, Amapiano flexed its musical muscle, becoming the most popular hashtag on the popular platform in South Africa, which contributed to more than 1.6 billion views. Amapiano on TikTok in South Africa is actually the biggest music genre on the platform. We haven't seen a local music genre take over a platform in, in this kind of huge escalation in a very long time. For them, a piano is, 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 is a very simple thing. You just need to put your kick in, your shaker in, then yeah, your package in, so it all makes sense. At just 20 years old, Vigro Deep has taken the Ama piano scene by storm. His keen ear for music has helped catapult him to success, not only in South Africa, but all over the world. I uh, started producing a thing by the age of 16. Ama piano was, was, was something that was like, um, it was trending, so everyone wanted to be part of it. So I was like, okay, I'm doing hip hop now, so let me just try something else, something different. A few years later, Vigro produced his first hit and has quickly become one of the most recognizable figures in the genre. My favorite part of what I'm doing is that um, I like music and then I be happy when I play a song that I just did in my studio, a song that I did with no one, no crowds, no reactions, and then the next thing, boom, a whole bunch of hundred people that dance into it. The music is, is, is a spiritual thing, and yeah. So if I have a calling for it, then music is music at the end of the day. You can just make something without even thinking straight or without doing nothing. So you have to like be in your mood, be like in your own space so that you understand what you're doing. With his music commanding dance floors, Vigro is pushing himself and the Amapiano sound beyond the African continent. My dream is to get to Spain. Yeah, because that's where the music is. The sound that I do, I think of Ibiza types, Tomorrowland, that's, that's what I'm looking for, that's what I'm looking at, that's, that's what I'm currently working at. People are even noticing it, that your sound is going somewhere. That's the main goal, yeah. DJs like Dumelo Magnoni, AKA Mr. Jazik, are trying to make it easier for Amapiano artists to succeed. These venues are very important because it's where the sound belongs, you know, it's the home of the sound. When you are here, 
you don't feel lost. You don't want to go home, first of all. You're just like, why are they switching off the music? Magnoni owns Junk Park, a venue giving ama piano artists the space to showcase their talents while also networking. This place is good for everyone to meet. That's also another advantage that I have because I get to give opportunities where I can also learn. It's always important to give like the next person an opportunity to be whatever they want to be. So you give them room and space to express how they would like to portray themselves. And at the end of it, you get the results that come out. And for Vigro, Amapiano's moment right now is creating another opportunity, a chance for South Africa's youth to share a part of their culture with the world. Amapiano is it's so unique in SA, like we have our own journey. We started something from scratch, so everyone is, is happy about it. I'm happy about it because like it, it, it makes us who we are. We can like say, this is us, this is Africa, this is SA. As the distinctive sounds of Ama Piano ring out in townships across South Africa, the airy and jazz-infused dance music is also gaining popularity worldwide. Once a male-dominated musical genre, over the last few years, Ama Piano has seen the spotlight shine on more and more women who are stepping onto the scene. DJing, dancing, singing even designing clothing that takes inspiration from Ama Piano. People are interpreting the music. All of these things really work to engage all the senses. Dance is huge on TikTok. There's a new dance being done to songs every day. Bontle Mudisele is no stranger to dance and social media and says she's been a dancer for 16 years amassing a large following on TikTok and Instagram, which she uses to showcase Ama Piano dances that pay homage to the past. The visual representation of Ama Piano is such that it breathes from a ground of familiarity. You see the marriage of all these different cultures coming in. I think the beauty about Ama Piano is that it doesn't demand you to be the best dancer in the world. That's why I say it's so inviting. It's so infectious. It's simple, it's easy, it feels like a connection of sorts, you know, and you really, it allows you to express yourself. As with most music genres, there are signature dance moves hey. associated with it. Hey. So if you want to get into the groove of Ama Piano, okay, don't be disheartened. This is one of those styles that are super, super simple. If you take the foundation of Ama Piano, there is a certain bounce to it. And that bounce, people refer to as the pouncing cat. So you're going one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's as simple as what your legs are doing, right? Where the pouncing cat comes in, your arms give a motion like that. Okay, so this is what you're doing. So it's as if you're rowing. So now you move away from the pouncing cat into something a little more fun, okay? So you raise your arms, and to music you would go, hey. Hey? Okay. Right. So, <laughs> now, so when I speak about the familiarity of Ama Piano and its ancestry coming from other dance moves, you would see something like, back in the day, you would have done something like Kopeza, okay? Back in the day, Kopeza would have been that. Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter, okay? In Ama Piano today, you would do the same thing popularized by Devon Goggles. And all you do is there is a head bump and you just rotate. So that's what you do today in Ama Piano. Ama Piano's culture of dance, much like its music, spans generations. You see babies from the age of three years old who are doing all these Amapiano dance moves with their grandmother 
and teens within the same home and it really is for everyone and the spirit of it says that it's for you for your coco for your auntie it is for the queen in england if she wants <laughs> but it's uh it's for everyone and it's, it's beautiful ama piano creators artists dancers and fans all have a specific style Kamu Mpela is another woman making a mark in this genre. She's an Amapiano artist and influencer whose style, merging African culture with Western fashion, has caught the eye of millions of followers. The styling personally, how I'm influenced. I know I'm a hood girl, but I need to also make it, make sure that I'm presented in a very good manner. In case I stand next to Cardi B, they must think we're on the same level of style. I always want to look posh and great and just really hot. So this is a style. This was really influenced by. I, I'm on Instagram a lot, and I like American style. So this is part of me, and like a bit of American, because nobody dresses like this. So I just always I have to make sure that I'm leading. This is more of the classy Gabon Pella. I just go out to clubs, you know, look cute for dinner. Yeah. And while Ama Piano is growing globally, Gamo says her success as a woman in the industry hasn't come easy. It's really tough, I won't lie, like, um, you don't get support the way males support each other, you know, but you always need to know your power and say, this is my power, this is what I'm good at, and this is what I will do to push. So I use dancing to push my music. I don't need them to support me because I have the dancers supporting me. Despite the obstacles, she is proud to be a part of the movement. I just think it's, it's really a blessing. I wanted to be a presenter. Like I wanted to be like, yo, what's good, welcome, you know? And But my dreams were really big and they were bigger than presenting. And being a part of this Ama Piano movement has changed my life so much. Deben Gogo is one of the first women to be successful on the Ama Piano scene. Her songs have gone platinum. She's respected as a DJ, a dancer, a performer, and a trailblazer for women in the genre. This journey has been really, really incredible, crazy, frightening. I started DJing about four years ago. Uh, it was just at a time when I just felt like people had sort of forgotten or neglected uh, old school house music. Um, everyone was playing very commercial music, so that's where I started. At the time, most of the women involved um, in Ama Piano were singers, dancers. There weren't a lot of DJs, you know, unless you were going to the hood, um, you didn't see a lot of women DJs in the scene, you know, dominating the scene. So I kind of think I was really at the right place at the right time. Devin says she was one of the first females to release an EP, a complete body of work centered around the Ama Piano scene. I think I just had brought a different element, something that people hadn't seen in a while. DJs who were women, there were so few, so few. And, you know, fast forward to now, you're seeing a, a girl trained every single day, every other week, and seeing this population of women in the industry grow, you know, by leaps and bounds, and using the opportunities that they have, and using the platforms that they have to further themselves. We will fight for the next generation, for the next generation of female artists and DJs that are coming into the space so that they don't have to go through this. Not only are the distinctive sounds of Ama Piano creating a movement, the genre has now changed the music industry in South Africa. I'm from the time where you would have to go onto YouTube or you would have to find a dance documentary or you'd have to wait for the next step up to drop for you to know where the next best dance craze is. And now we live in a time where people have had to reimagine and create a presence online. Before the pandemic, you would get songs either through your WhatsApp or you'd have to go to the hood, to the producers, go with the USB, get the music. But as soon as we went into lockdown, people were sitting in their homes producing every single day, dropping music. Social media these days has become a virtual radio station. The technology has made it simple because once I'm done with the track, I put it up on the internet, I create a short clip of the video and it starts trending. 
As for the future of Amapiano, artists see an opportunity to influence generations to come. Amapiano is a culture, it's music, it's styling, it's a whole movement from South Africa. It's so diverse that we have singers, rappers, we have Guaito, it's like, it's so broad. I see a further globalization of it, both musically and in the dance sense, you know, so I see Scottish folk <laughs> fusing Amapiano dance moves in their culture. I see martial arts somehow fused in Amapiano dance culture. I mean, it, it can exist in any place and in any space. This is the second time in my lifetime seeing a predominantly black, a black owned genre taking over the world again. We haven't seen this since Afrobeats and it's, it's an African sound. Amapiano's broken all the rules. It's unapologetic, it's innovative, collaborative, and disruptive in the way it's transforming an industry. I feel that it's one of those genres that's just a mainstay. It's not gonna go anywhere. And it'll never linger in the background. It's always going to be a representative of sound in South Africa for the young people, for the ones who want to dance. One thing I really hope though, is that it does stay rooted with the South African artists, that they are going to continue getting the credit, that nobody is going to take the genre and claim it as, as theirs, because this is really uh, a success story for the South African music industry, I feel, and we, we want that story to continue to be told. It's just lovely to have the shift, you know, the, the focus come to us, where it actually has always been. It's just like, this comes from us, but now you can see that, you know where it originates from, you see the source. It's a crazy time to be alive, to be African, to be young, <laughs> to be black, to be a woman, especially. I think for me, it's, it's going to be one of the biggest African uh, youth movements. That's how I want to see. Where we as Africans, the younger generation, we've got our own thing and say, wow, we are proud of this. It's not an American thing, it's not whatever, but it's brewed right here in Africa. 